Good day, fellow disciple of Jesus. Welcome to prayer on Monday, the 14th of March. Let's begin with a deep breath and our opening responses. The second phrase is yours. I'll repeat it. Cast your burden upon the Lord and God will sustain you together and God will sustain you. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Together, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Together, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Blessed be the Lord day by day the God of our salvation who bears our burdens. Together, the God of our salvation who bears our burdens. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. Psalm 57, appointed for today, from a very difficult place, the psalmist writes, um, being trampled upon by violent oppressors, and yet calls their soul to praise God. I think of this, uh, as I read this psalm, I think of the people in Ukraine, and my heart is with them, my prayer for them, and for other countries of the world where violent oppression continues. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful, for I have taken refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until this time of trouble has gone by. I will call upon you the Most High God, the God who maintains my cause. You will send from heaven and save me. You will confound those who trample upon me. You will send forth your love and your faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions that devour the people. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongue a sharp sword. They have laid a net for my feet, and I am bowed low. They have dug a pit before me but have fallen into it themselves. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. My heart is firmly fixed. O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and make melody. Wake up, my spirit. Awake, lute and harp. I myself will waken the dawn. I will confess you among the peoples, O Lord. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is greater than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. Let us pray. God, our help and strength, look with mercy on all who are oppressed in mind, body, or human dignity. Shield and protect them and give them that wholeness which is your will for all your children. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I'll be reading to you all of chapter 4 of Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. I'm reading from the message to mix it up and to also bring you this dynamic translation, which is in very colloquial English today, which is how the Koine Greek would have been written at the time. It was a rough and tumble working person's language, not a finely expressed eloquent Greek, but the conversation of the marketplace. And so with that in mind, I read to you Paul's letter. Don't imagine us leaders to be something we aren't. We are servants of Christ, not his masters. We are guides into God's most sublime secrets, not security guards posted to protect them. The requirements for a good guide are reliability and accurate knowledge. It matters very little to me what you think of me, even less where I rank in popular opinion. I don't even rank myself. Comparisons in these matters are pointless. I'm not aware of anything that would disqualify me from being a good guide for you, but that doesn't mean much. The master makes that judgment. So don't get ahead of the master and jump to conclusions with your judgments before all the evidence is in. When the master comes, he will bring out in the open and place in evidence all kinds of things we never even dreamed of, inner motives and purposes and prayers. 
Only then will any one of us get to hear the well done of God. All I'm doing right now, friends, is showing you how these things pertain to Apollos and me, so that you will learn restraint and not rush into making judgments without knowing all the facts. It's important to look at all the things from God's point of view. I would rather not see you inflating or deflating reputations based on mere hearsay. For who do you know that really knows you, knows your heart? And even if they did, is there anything they would discover in you that you could take credit for? Isn't everything you have and everything you are sheer gifts from God? So what's the point of all this comparing and competing? You already have all you need. You already have more access to God than you can handle. Without bringing either Apollos or myself into it, you're sitting on top of the world, at least God's world, and we're right there, sitting alongside you. It seems to me that God has put us who bear his message on stage in a theater in which no one wants to buy a ticket. We're something everyone stands around and stare at, like an accident in the street. We are the Messiah's misfits. You might be sure of yourselves, but we live in the midst of frailties and uncertainties. You might be well thought of by others, but we're mostly kicked around. Much of the time we don't have enough to eat. We wear patched and threadbare clothes. We get doors slammed in our faces, and we pick up odd jobs anywhere we can to eke out a living. When they call us names, we say, God bless you. When they spread rumors about us, we put in a good word for them. We're treated like garbage, potato peelings from the culture's kitchen, and it's not getting any better. I'm not writing all this as a neighborhood scold just to make you feel rotten. I'm writing as a father to you, my children. I love you and want you to grow up well, not spoiled. There are a lot of people around who can't wait to tell you what you've done wrong but there aren't many fathers willing to take the time and effort to help you grow up. It was as Jesus helped me proclaim God's message to you that I became your father. I'm not, you know, asking you to do anything I'm not already doing myself. This is why I sent Timothy to you earlier. He is also my dear son and true to the master, he will refresh your memory on the instructions I regularly give all the churches on the way of Christ. I know there are some among you who are so full of themselves they never listen to anyone, let alone me. They don't think I'll ever show up in person, but I'll be there sooner than you think, God willing, and then we'll see if they're full of anything but hot air. God's way is not a matter of mere talk it's an empowered life. So how should I prepare to come to you? As a severe disciplinarian who makes you toe the mark? Or as a good friend and counselor who wants to share heart to heart with you? You decide. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The translation is almost disarming in its simplicity and ability to just communicate in common language. Sometimes we miss the spiritual truth that's being conveyed just because it comes to us so either formally or in this case informally. The dispute here is that the church is questioning Paul's credentials and his credibility to be an apostle of the Lord. Though certainly a young Christian church, it was still quite worldly in its appraisal of others. People were appraised as more important because of their wealth, because of their social standing. They might be more credible if they were profitable teachers and not poor. They would be more credible if they had the respect of the wider community and in fact were not disdained, as Paul so often experienced as a disciple of the Lord, as a prophet sharing the good news of Jesus. So to a certain extent, he is actually scolding the congregation for their judgmentalism, for some who prefer the smooth, polished words of Apollos as opposed to the rough and ready language of St. Paul. I think the message for us here today is to be careful in our quick judgments and assessments of others. 
We all know the adage, don't judge a book by its cover. Truth is, we so often do, though, don't we? Let us instead be seekers after truth wherever it may be found, with the ears of our hearts wide open to hear the good news of God from whencever it comes. Join me. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Trusting in God's promises, let us pray for the world and for our own needs, saying, Holy God, hear our prayer. God, you blessed Abraham and Sarah and promised to make them the ancestors of many nations. In Jesus Christ, you have opened your covenant to everyone who lives by faith in you. For all the descendants of Abraham and Sarah, both Jews and Christians, that they may trust in your promise, dwell together in peace, and be a sign of your abiding love. Holy God, hear our prayer. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Son, called disciples to follow the way of sacrificial love for all pastors and teachers and bishops, that they may lead the church by humble example, take up their cross in faithful service, and live for the sake of the gospel. Holy God, hear our prayer. God, your reign encompasses all the earth, though many do not remember your gracious sovereignty for peace among the nations and for integrity within governments. Let your will be done on earth as in heaven. Holy God, hear our prayer. God, you hear the cry of the poor, and you satisfy the hungry with good things, for the poor and the oppressed, that they may find deliverance, and for all who voluntarily take up the cross of self-denial to serve the poor and alleviate human mystery. Holy God, for them, hear our prayer. God, you know the needs of the afflicted and you hear their cries. For those who suffer illness of mind or body, that they may find relief from suffering and be restored to wholeness. For those who are dislocated, violently oppressed, we think of the Ukrainians in this time of conflict. Lord, hear our prayer for peace and deliver your people. Holy God, hear our prayer. Grant our prayers, God, by your grace. Stir up in us the will to seek out your kingdom with the dedication of our lives in ministry to the world for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ, through whom we pray. Amen. Gathering all our cares into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the peace of God, which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier fall upon you and embrace you this day and forevermore. Amen, amen. Have a blessed day today, Monday, the start of a new week.